Good morning and welcome to This Week in Phenomenalness on our road to success, the CEO of I Am. So I just wanted to kind of do a recap and, uh, you know, really look at what we experienced over this last week. You know, this past week we were looking at finding the gifts of our shadows and uh, <laughs> what a crazy week it's been as a result of I guess it's like be careful what you ask for or what you set into your consciousness because it's gonna like pull out all those things as experiences for your your week and I've had a pretty rich week so um, the first thing was about like removing the should factor so it's about you know really not just saying oh I should do this or I shouldn't do that it's about doing it and so, um, you know, before we get started, I just want everybody to take a deep breath and open your hearts and place your attention on something that you truly love. And let's just kind of like open ourselves up to this new energy going into the weekend, the weekend of rest where we can, you know, really place our attention on manifesting where we're not, you know, caught up in the day to day and I got to pay my bills and I got to go to here and I've got this appointment. So, you know, this weekend is really about rest and, you know, I think every weekend is about that if we can have that. And, um, you know, let's just keep that energy open as we kind of recap. So again, it's about, you know, finding the gifts of our shadows and removing those fears. So, um, or removing the should factor. So in this past week of should factor, I definitely experienced like that push and pull of, okay, where do I find the gifts and the shadows as I confront myself with my shoulds and the things that I really haven't I keep putting away and putting that energy, you know, out there in the universe and not getting the work done. So it's kind of stagnant energy sitting in the universe. And um, I would say that came to a head for me probably three days ago. Three days ago, I really said, okay, the, screw this. I, I really need to get interns and I really need to get help um, from a social media perspective. And so I did it. I went to internship.com. Thank you to a dear friend of mine, Kate Nelligan, who told me about it a long time ago. And I, I guess stubborn, said, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll sh I should do that. I should definitely do that. And <laughs> three months later, I finally do it. Actually, it's freaking awesome because the, the whole idea of interns.com is about being able to really crowdsource uh, to find the right candidates to be able to work with you. So. I put out a posting for social media coordinator and I decided to make it a little fun and I gave the people who actually ended up submitting, I gave them a task so um, to see what their social media skills are like. So we'll see by Monday what their social media skills are like or actually by tomorrow because the, the task ends tomorrow and they basically have to help me get 250 votes. I'm at mm, I think 100 votes now and I need another 150 by tomorrow. So we'll see how good their social media skills are. So that was kind of me um, looking at the, those shows and those areas where I, it's kind of dark for me that I I really haven't empowered myself in and I empowered myself so it was it was kind of it was really how how can I say it it was I'm just opening back up the iPad so I can make sure I look at what we're talking about here it was really uh, a, a real tug for me like to do it but I just I, I just hadn't gotten to doing it so I, I did the should and then the other thing was like redefining success and asking myself how do I su define success in my life um, I gotta say that was probably the hardest thing that I had to face in finding the gifts of my shadow because in my shadow there was insecurity, there was uh, lack of confidence. And uh, I didn't know those things were there because, you know, I'm such a go-getter and like I just get on the phone and deal with people and, and get it done. Um, but some of my own insecurities came up this past week and me into redefining my success, uh, I, I was really challenged and and I think it came out in my attitude towards my peers and and you know and I was ugly <laughs> and I had to embrace it and I did and um, you know I think the thing that helped me the most with it was asking myself and these are like three things that I really like to ask myself when I'm dealing with people is is it kind is it just and is it loving and um, if the criteria didn't, if I didn't match those three things in my actions, then I needed to reassess it. So in redefining success for myself this week, I really realized that one, I have accomplished everything I've set out to accomplish in my life. And right now, what I've set out to accomplish is 
burst, it's it's building and it's growing and and I'm doing a really good job and I, and I have to be proud of that and so you know I, I laid out a list of things that helped me to really kind of look at how I redefine success for myself um, and if you're there listening feel free to text me you know my phone number most of you and you know let me know what your thoughts are and if you have any questions as well as you know on the Facebook thread here if you're on the Facebook thread or you're on the Ustreams thread which I posted both on the event page feel free to uh, type in whatever you know you feel like saying there on that or just like I said you know send me an email I'm, I've got the iPad open I've got my email open um, so you know this week in finding the gifts of my shadow I got to address the should factor which is something that I think we all fall victim to at some point and I know victim isn't the greatest word but again that's looking at the shadow and embracing that and the second thing was redefining my success and um, I felt empowered to know that it's okay to sometimes be hard on yourself and feel insecure because if you don't feel insecure then there's nothing to address and there's nothing to face so um, or if you don't feel you know those icky feelings of whatever it is and for you it may be something different it's really about embracing that and saying okay you know there's something here for me to gain from this and it's a great experience for me to have so I empower you to, you know, if, you, if you're just coming on now, to really look at that, you know, what success means for you now. Not what success meant for you two years ago, five years ago, when you were a child. Um, because as we get older and, you know, we get more defined as who we are, those, those goals and those things should change along the way to match who you are today. So who I am today is a successful businesswoman who loves the people that she works with and is really grateful to be on this road to success and I am the CEO of, of me so you know and that's where it really starts so let's just kinda look at today and where we are and um, I laid out uh, goal number five it, and I'm kind of not I usually I do two things that I kinda set out which last week it was you know the should and the redefine this week I wanna just really focus on setting a goal that matters because now that I've kind of redefined all those things and gone through this process and looked at the dark spots, uh, I really just want to kind of look at setting the goal. And, you know, I'm just going to kind of read um, from my whole little experience of, of what I, I, I look at as setting the goal. Uh, this seems like an obvious one, but many of us don't set goals. And if we do set goals, do we set, um, how do we value those goals? And, uh, you know, the process of setting goals is about feeling a sense of mastery and building confidence each step of the way. To start, focus on goals that are meaningful, genuine, and they genuinely excite you, and that become top priority on our everyday. Goals are personal, so I would say choose ones that speak to you. And uh, be patient because, you know, anytime you set forth something in the universe, it's going to bring up all kinds of stuff, and I think far, far too many times we get... Uh, caught up in the oh it's gonna be great and it is gonna be great but I heard something once when I was after my car accident in 19 so 96 was my accident 1998 a man said to me on a bus one day when the creates when the creators trying to create something he gives it a rocky road and the rockier the road the more successful the person is because you get it's like washing water over a rock for a really long time you get you know smooth so you get smoothed out as you you know walk along the road so um you know, I think top number one bottom line for me is living my best um, with my choices and the way that I live my life. And once I decided that uh, it was the best thing for me, nothing else is optional um, because I'm living in the now. So the world of opportunities open up to me and they open up to all of us and challenges are reframed. And I think that's kind of what we need to look at. Um, so setting goals, I, you know, a, a dear friend of mine, um, Melanie, she, you know, reminded me probably about a year, year and a half ago when we started working together on some women's empowerment stuff about, you know, Sundays, taking Sunday as a day to really like manifest what you want. And so I'm, and really laying out what the steps are for those manifestations that you want in your life. So I would empower you to between now and Sunday to really take some time and contemplate about the things that you want to set in motion because the things that you write down on paper and that you set in motion they actually do come true. Um, 
and the things that you set out in the universe. Um, and congratulations to a dear friend of mine who set out a goal about, mm, I think, two weeks ago. And she met that goal and is exceeding that goal now. And I'm so happy for her that she actually got her first cut of her movie done. So um, that's, you know, a light and then that shares light for me and I think it's um, you know we lead by example in life and she definitely was a great example for me this week of uh, you know setting forth an intention and being able to like see the follow through on it and it wasn't just about the should anymore you know she she redefined success for herself this past week um, so you know that kind of psyched me up for this whole you know experience of um, setting a goal now and and really looking at what that goal means to me and you know um, so uh, the last thing I want to do on our road to success this week is every week I like to choose something from, oh, and I'll put it in front of my face, The Best Years of Your Life by Debbie Ford. And it's actually a collection of cards. I'll pull them out, some of them, so that you can see them. She's like an inspiration to me, this woman. She's really, I actually got the opportunity to go to her house once and just meet her. And, you know, this is where I actually was given this set. So um, I'm going to pick a card and I'm going to share it with you. And then I will make sure and post it on Facebook so that you can actually see what the card had to say. Although I will read it. And the one that is like holding onto my hand is have some fun. Woohoo! <laughs> I can welcome that in this week and know that this week is going to be freaking awesome for fun. So it says, believe it or not, most adults need to remind or be need to be reminded to take time out for fun. Trained as we are to get things done, we often devalue or neglect the most important aspect of our life. Right? Um, but do things just for doing things just for the sake of our own enjoyment recharges and rejuvenates us and I truly believe that so having fun is an actual necessity and it's an activity that feeds and nourishes us at the deepest levels so have some fun this week and enjoy the benefits it produces in virtually every aspect of your life so this week in your fun assignment is to make a list of 10 activities that you don't uh, or that you do on a regular basis if your life were decided and dedicated to having fun. So now let's start that again. Sorry, uh, I'm reading and, and thinking at the same time and I really should just be think uh, reading, not thinking. <laughs> okay, this week in fun. Your assignment is to make a list of 10 activities that you do on a regular basis. If your life were dedicated to having fun, then schedule at least one of those activities into your week. Enjoy yourself. Want more? If you really want to have fun, come on board for one of the life transforming uh, transforming cruises and check out debbieford.com for details. So I'll always push Debbie Ford because Debbie Ford's awesome. But basically this week is about laying out all the things that you would do for fun in your life if your life was just de dedicated to fun and at least do one of them. So I know one that I do on a regular basis or at least three days a week is go to the gym. So right now I'm going to wish you all well on your road to success as you are the CEO of I am and um, let's just you know close by closing your eyes taking a deep breath in letting it go and just remembering to have some fun <laughs> So on our road to success, I wish you all well, and you are phenomenal, and this week in phenomenalness, thanks you very much for tuning in. Take care.